Good morning, everyone. So together with uh, my colleague, Mr. Zhuo, on behalf of our TT Incorporation, we would like to share with you the structural design challenges of Shanghai Tower due to time limit. It is impossible for us uh, to include uh, all these uh, contents. So we can only give you some highlights. Uh, just now, Gensler has already shared with us uh, the CWSS uh, system, yeah, the wall supporting system. So uh, I will uh, not elaborate on this uh, topic any, any more. All right, Shanghai Tower is located in Lu Jiajui area, Pudong New area, Shanghai which is right adjacent to other two super top buildings. A triangular is formulated. The height is 632 meters. And then it has 128 stories. So in terms of the entire site area, that is the 30,370 square meters, the total cross floor area of about 573,000 square meters. Then let's look at the entire Shanghai Tower. Based on the functionalities, and we divide it into nine zones in total. And then we also have like mechanical equipment layers and also the evacuation uh, zones. And uh, the standard kind of uh, stories are in circular shape. And uh, currently in the exterior curtain wall, it has a double skin uh, structure or system. And as it arises from uh, bottom to up, it is rotating and also shrinking as the height increases. Structure-wise, if we, if we look at the structural system, yeah, I will go into detail later on. On the bottom, we have the retail podium, and then we also have uh, five office zones, two hotels, and a sightseeing floors at the top. So you can clearly see the entire kind of uh, floor plane of the tower. And uh, actually, on the standard layer, it is in circular shape. And on the floors of the mechanical equipment and uh, shelter, shelter zones, it is in triangular shape. And it is uh, arising uh, directly. And so this kind of uh, structure is uh, simply designed. And uh, from 82.2 meters at zone 1 all the way to 46.5 meters at zone 8 in terms of the diameter. The next, let's uh, look at the challenges facing the entire project in terms of the structural design. For such a tall building in Shanghai, Actually, we have like very soft uh, clay kind of a uh, foundation. And uh, in addition, the weight of the tower is very heavy. And uh, the soil and uh, sand conditions in Shanghai are poor. And I would like to say that the top 15 meter soil is very soft, silty clay. So we have a very high requirement for structural design as a result. Then on a, such a huge weight, the pile group of 947 piles has been used to support the 6 meter thick mat foundation. Yeah, especially on a super column and also under the core wall in a super column. You know, we actually consider the concentrated load and you know, we use the staggered pattern pile layout so that we can arrange more piles. And you know, including the core and the super column, the entire tower, we want to make sure about the uniform force taken on the bottom and also to reduce this kind of uh, location settlement. So on the basement, you can look at the five-story fin walls at the basement levels to reduce the overall settlement. In, a, in addition, the force transfer will be in a uniform fashion. The final effectiveness is very prominent or obvious. We can reduce the maximum predicted settlement by 20 to 30 percent. And the force distribution is very even. In the meantime, 
We also managed to reduce the differential settlement. Another challenge we face for a Shanghai Tower, such a tall building, I think it was one of the tallest in this country, with a total height of 632 meters. So the structural system is quite challenging. How can we choose a safe and also economically sufficient, uh, efficient and also the kind of a construction feasible solution? This is a big challenge when it comes to us. For such a tall building, you look at the China regulations, you have to control that kind of a settlement by one out of 500 or within this kind of a range. In addition, how can we control the cycles? This is another challenge. Together with the Gensler company, you know, we did a lot of uh, design in the study on different structural options. Finally, we chose these core outriggers mega frame structural system, so which composed of a three dimensions, and it includes the concrete composite core, an exterior mega frame, and also the eight sloping super columns, etc. And as you can see clearly on the slide, the entire concrete composite core and the dimensions are around 30 meters by 30 meters. And on both sides, we have uh, a super column. And uh, we also have like the cruciform plane at zone 7 through 9. No core corners at zone 5 and 6. At the core wall, from zone 1 uh, through zone 4, it is uh, 30 meters by 30 meters. And uh, there are no core corners, as I mentioned, from zone 5 to zone 6. The second, let's look at the exterior mega frame. We have eight uh, super columns all the way up to zone 8. As I alluded to previously, for diagonal columns up to zone 5 to increase the stiffness and reduce the deflection. These columns' steel ratio ranges from 4% to 6%. 4% are true with those standard stories, while 6% are for those mechanical equipment stories which we need to reinforce. And also double built trusses for redundancy in a torsional stiffness and transfer the gravity loads to super columns. So the gravity loads in each zone can be well transferred to the super columns. Third component the outrigger trusses and its structural system. You know, we already analyzed on different options in the planes. You know, we have uh, six sets of uh, two-story steel outrigger trusses which are placed at the MEP floors. According to the findings of our studies, by using the outrigger trusses, it can effectively extend the kind of uh, cycles in the outriggers at low zones to reduce the effectively the building fundamental period, the upper outriggers to control of the story drifts at upper zones. And under the windy conditions, the China code require the stringent story drift limit of a 1 500th. The max story drift of Shanghai Tower is actually 1 out of a 505 under resultant wind and the 1 out of a 623rd under frequent seismic load. Of course, the table shows the fundamental period, that is a 9.6 seconds, so which is able to require the China load. And all those different parameters and factors are well aligned to the code in China. So you can look at the tower gravity system. I will not go into much detail on this part. On the MEP levels, we would like to say that the typical MAP levels and amenity levels, 200 to 250 millimeter thick composite slabs are adapted. And the one story high radial trusses cantilever at the upper MAP level are adapted. And the radial trusses to support the slab areas beyond the super columns. 
the next hour I'll give the floor to VP Zuo Qing to share with us some other design. All right, thank you very much. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce to you some of the performance-based design, or PPD in short, some of the results we achieve. So what are the procedures, or what is the process? In a nutshell, it is very easy and simple. So earlier on, you need to set up a kind of a performance objectives, and you choose the right seismic waves. After that, you also establish some models. After that, you start to do calculation, and then you acquire the results for analysis and comparisons. So the performance objectives or targets based on the code of China, we try to produce it and make sure it has a certain elast elasticity in small uh, seismic uh, movement, and uh, then in big seismic movement, some damage is allowed, but it is not allowed to be collapsed. So you look at the overall structural kind of uh, target, and uh, we also set very clear requirement for the uh, settlement. And uh, based on the different important layers of the uh, members, yeah, we have like a kind of a core wall and a link beam, super column, build a truss, outrigger, and a critical con uh, connections. Yes, we cr produce this detailed table, which you can go into detail later on. In a while conducting PBD, we adopted two different uh, programs. First, Abacus software, and uh, then we also use the uh, Perform 3D software computer programs for nonlinear analysis in choosing the seismic waves from different uh, sites and uh, according to different uh, seismic records. We chose those actually seismic waves that are in line with the characteristics of the with Shanghai, and uh, we spent a lot of time working with uh, the Research Institute and at Tongji University, as well as other stakeholders. And altogether, we spent over one month of time. Finally, we find out about seven sets of uh, ground acceleration time histories were selected from the worldwide records. And uh, you can look at the ratio between two components, which are 1 to 0 0.85, 2.65. So these are the PBD 3D findings. And overall speaking, you can look at this curve. It is one out of a hundred. We are staying well inside this range, and uh, we have a smaller wave and a bigger wave. And uh, in terms of a seismic uh, reaction for super tall buildings. And we need to look at the uh, stronger reaction on the upper part and a smaller one on the lower part. And the average drift is uh, smaller than one a hundredth. The next, these are some of the torsion strain we extract from the PBD Perform 3D. You can look at the kind of a wall body. In a lot of areas, show up the gray color. That means it is not subjected to this kind of a pull force. But on the upper part of the structure, we see uh, those kind of uh, uh, torsion strain. And then let's look at the results of the data analysis. 200 meters at the outrigger part, the kind of a pull or torsion strain is very large. So it showed that most of the walls are not in tension under the severe earthquake and the rebars do not yield except those in the top outrigger zone. Then we can look at the coupling beam rotation. Basically speaking, these curves refers to life safety areas. This refers to climb prevention. In this kind of uh, indicator, most of the coupling beams are at the level of life safety, and some of them beyond go beyond the life safety standard. You know, these are some statistics. So coupling beam along the x and y directions, more than 60% of the link beams remain elastic. 
over 85 percent are under life safety level. So no coupling beams beyond the collapse prevention. Next. Then we look at the results from Abacus software. In comparison with the results of a performance of 3D, there is no big difference between these two. And the maximum interstory drift is 1 out of 97 under the ground motion curve of Aero 7 triple 1. The average interstory drift is h out of 131. So you can look at these uh, data also on the sh slide. And uh, then under compression, we look at the damage. And uh, basically, most uh, coupling beams experience compression damage, but most of all have no compression damage. And uh, where we see red colors, that means very high level of a strain. However, damage has not occurred yet. But on some other coupling beams, we also observe some severe damage. And the under tension situation, what about the wall? And most uh, coupling beams experience tension damage. Some walls at the top zone in a strengthened zone experience tension damage. The, this is a situation of the out trigger. The max stress is 292 MPA smaller than a steel design strength. Therefore, outrigger truss remains elastic. In a belt trusses check, the max stress is 259 m pa smaller than a steel design strength. Belt truss remains elastic. In a then steel plate check, embedded steel plate in wall remain elastic. So summary, actually the maximum story drift ratios, average values is less than code limit of one out of a hundred. So core compressive demand is below outmit capacity except at a few local points. And overall, the tower uh, uh, achieves the requested life safety performance level. So in the interest of time, I will not go into much detail on the different pictures. And what are the biggest challenge for our project? First, how to support a 128-story super tall tower on soft soils? and uh, how to resist the huge lateral loads while controlling story drifts. How to support the curtain wall panels of a unique twisting exterior facade disengaged from the main building. And uh, we also used different advanced analytics methods to evaluate the structural performance on the different levels of seismic events. All right, I would like to make some comments. We chose those kind of a mega frame structural system. This is a innovative kind of a move made by a TT company for the first time. Okay, the mega frame structural system. Uh, this is uh, Poon Dennis, uh, vice chair, and uh, also uh, Fu, uh, Paul Fu and uh, Steve Zhu. Thank you very much, and I uh, thank you for your kind attention.